Modern Warfare is an interesting Call of Duty game. For a lack of better way of explaining it, it is simply difficult. There's a fast time to kill, the maps really cater to campers, and it's just hard to have a higher kill death ratio. And a lot of people, that's their goal in game. That's how they see themselves getting better. That kill death ratio rises and you can tell, hey, look at this, I'm getting better at the game. And today's video is all about that, giving you guys 10 tips to actually raise your kill death ratio. These are going to range from simple things like different guns and attachments you can use to make yourself simply better at the game just with a click of a button and other things are more mental things things that you can actually change about your play style that is going to drastically help you get more kills and die less that plain that simple so hopefully this video does help you improve at the game and if you do enjoy it and you do like what you see here it is always appreciated if you hit that like button it also shows me that one i helped you out and two you want to see more videos like this one so if you did enjoy please hit that like button without further ado though let's dive in and talk about 10 things you can do to improve your kill death ratio now as far as raising that kill death ratio i think the first most important thing is knowing what weapons are going to help you the most traditionally you want weapons weapons that are going to be good in any situation and on top of that aren't too difficult to use. These weapons are ones with good fire rates, good damage profile, but specifically very little recoil. And I think there's five weapons that do a very good job of this. But first I wanted to give you an example of the opposite of this, a weapon that isn't really that way, the Odin. The Odin is actually a really good assault rifle. It deals really good damage and kills really quickly but it has a lot of recoil, and on top of that, if you miss shots, your time to kill is very, very slow. So it's definitely not an easy weapon to use. The five that I would recommend for starting out with include the M4A1, the Kilo 141, as it has very low recoil, and then a bunch of SMGs, the MP5, the AUG, which was newly buffed, and finally the MP7. This one you're going to unlock last, so kind of use the other ones until you get this. All of these are very good weapons with very low recoil, they're easy to pick people off across maps with, and they deal good damage. But most importantly, that recoil is very low, which makes them easy to use. Now, now that you have a good weapon that you want to use, the next step is choosing attachments, and this is where it gets a little bit more particular and difficult as far as attachments goes i don't think there's one way that's absolutely right what you want to do is play into your strengths if you're a player that doesn't move around as much you want to go for a weapon that has less recoil maybe more ammo in it one that really moving around isn't going to be a big deal with so using attachments like extended magazines and grips that are going to improve your recoil is best for you however if you're a rushing player a guy that likes running around you're going to want to use attachments that are good for that Things like steepled grips are really good or using no stock is really going to reduce your move speed and aim down sight speed and make you a better rusher. You want to use attachments that are going to work towards your play style. So now that you have a weapon, now that you have attachments, your next step is perks. I use the same perks on every single class that I use. I use EOD, Ghost, and Battle Hardened. The reason why I think EOD is a must is there's so many claymores, bouncing beddies, grenades, RPGs going around every single map that if you're not protected from explosives, you're in a lot of trouble. Secondly, Ghost, you pretty much have to use this right now. Ghost makes it so you never show up on the mini map, and that's just too good of a perk not to use. And then finally, Battle Hardened. Basically, I just use this to protect myself from concussions. A lot of people use concussions. I don't like getting stunned by them into oblivion, and this counter them if you're going to replace any perk battle hardens probably the best one to do so but personally i believe these are the best perks in the game and these are the ones that are going to make you the best at the game so the one other thing that you can change super easy that's going to improve the way that you play is your sensitivity now in this game i recommend using a one higher horizontal sensitivity than vertical people don't jump very much in this game you don't have to snap to a vertical height very quickly but people do run quickly side to side therefore having a faster horizontal sensitivity sensitivity is going to make it easier for you to get on target and then the lower vertical sensitivity is going to make it easier for you to get headshots now i personally use eight seven eight horizontal seven vertical but I think you should test it out and see what feels best for you. A lower sensitivity might be good or a higher sensitivity. Play around with this until you find one that feels right and then stick to it improving at that sensitivity. No one sensitivity is right for everyone. You just kind of have to try it and figure out what works best for you. After this, the biggest recommendation I can give for simply raising your kill death ratio is do not 
play ground war now this one might be surprising to a lot of people because i've seen a lot of people's good improve your kill death videos and everyone says play ground war it'll make your kill death better and the one thing that's true there is yes there are a lot more people that you can potentially kill in ground war but there's also a lot more ways for you to die including tanks including more people including snipers that you can't even see and i find myself having a worse kill death in ground war than i do any 6v6 or 10v10 game mode simply for the reason tanks are in there and there's a lot more people that can potentially kill you so i recommend playing 6v6 and really working on your map navigation so this brings us into our next point which is map navigation don't run through the center of the map this is a tip that goes back to the beginning of call of duty when you stick to the edges of the map basically you only have to worry about 180 degrees of people that section of your body that is facing the outside of the map you know enemies can't come from that direction therefore it's making the area you have to worry about enemies split in half making it easier for you to expect where those enemies are coming from honestly you might not find as many people this way but the best tip i can give you is find locations near the edges of the map that directly look into the middle of the map that makes it so you are going to be able to see the people in the middle of the map but they'll have a more difficult time seeing you because they can't flank and get around to your back this brings us to our next point and this one might change pretty soon and that is using the compass right now enemies when they fire their weapon do not show up on the minimap that may be changing in a coming update as soon as tomorrow but as of right now use that compass to your advantage as soon as you see a red dot there you know there's an enemy in that direction you don't know what room they're in what corner they're hiding in but you know there's an enemy over there which means if you were to go in that direction you should proceed with caution yes go to that red dot try to get that kill but as soon as you realize that they're in a building try to find a tactical way for you to get in there without them having the advantage on you and the way that you can do that is by the next tip using your teammates to your advantage so yes you can't see people's red dots on a mini map unless you got a uav and even then they're probably not showing up because everyone's using ghost but you can see your teammates on the mini map and if you use them to be able to tell where the enemies are you're going to have a huge advantage the way of doing this is if a teammate dies you know that there's going to be an enemy around there the second way is if you're going to breach a building let your teammate go first yes they're probably going to die but one it'll tell you that there's someone in that building or in that area and two you'll see where the shots are coming from and know where that enemy is also if you right, wait the right amount of time chances are after that enemy kills your teammate they're probably going to be reloading which means you can get the jump on them while they are reloading and finally the last tip and i don't really like to give this one but in this game it's just true patience now by patience i don't mean camping i don't mean just sit in a window mounted waiting for people to come because number one then you'll have to be really patient and you're not going to get very many kills and on top of that it's actually relatively easy to kill those people you just get killed by them once and then one person has to throw a grenade or throw a c4 or flank you from behind because you're just sitting staring at that window what i mean is in this game there is a lot of power positions buildings or windows or roofs where you're going to have an advantage on your enemy what you want to do is get to these power positions get two to three kills and then move on to the next power position by moving you're going to leave your enemies guessing as to where you are this is the best way of accumulating kill streaks and staying on top of your enemies so they don't know exactly where you're sitting exactly where you're camping i don't recommend just sitting in a window staring at a doorway i do recommend trying to get to these power positions and playing tactfully yes it's slower than other call of duty games especially the black ops games but it's the best way to excel within this game hopefully you understand and know please do not sit in a window mounted. So ladies and gentlemen, those are 10 tips to help you raise your kill death ratio. I know some of them were relatively basic, but I tried to give you the basics to really help you raise that kill death ratio to get that number going up. And I am curious, what is your kill death ratio? If you want to, let me know down in the comments below what that kill death ratio is and kind of what's your goal to get it up to. On top of that, as always, if you enjoyed the video, it always is very appreciated. If you do hit that like button, it does really help out the channel. And of course, if you like what you see here and want to stay up to date on all my videos make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you turn notifications on and as always guys i hope you enjoyed the video and until next time peace out we are, we are